What's up guys? Justin here with the realtimeessentials.com back with another Unity level tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out the terrain authoring system. The system that you can use in order to quickly create terrain inside of Unity. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so first things first, we're going to want to make sure that we have the terrain editing tools enabled inside of Unity. And so to do that, we're going to want to go up to Window package manager and inside of package manager what you want to do is you want to go to not the my assets but you want to go to the Unis unity registry all right and so what we want to do is we want to scroll down and we want to look for the terrain tools and so you may not see terrain tools in your list um, because it hasn't been enabled because it's a part of a preview package so what you want to do is you want to click on the advanced button right here go to your advanced project settings and under package manager you want to check the box for enable preview packages so preview packages are basically packages that are still in development and they're not a hundred percent ready to go yet um, in this case um, these have been around for a while so I'm not really sure why they're in a preview package but um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna enable them what we want to do is now Let's jump back over here. Make sure that you enable terrain tools. So there should be a button here for like import or download or something like that. Just make sure that you've enabled it. And then once you've enabled it, we can start using the tools. So first things first, to add a terrain, what we can do is we can go to game object and under 3D object, if you have the tools enabled, you're gonna get the option for a terrain in here. So if I click in here to add a terrain, that's gonna add a big terrain in my scene like this you can see how it's just this massive plane that's in here right now and so the thing with this though is we didn't really get a whole lot of control over it when we first brought it in it just kind of like plops this giant thing in here what we can do instead is we can go to window terrain and click on terrain toolbox that's going to give us the option to create a new terrain where we have a little bit more control over the settings so for example you can start off and you can set things like the width or the length, other things like that. So I'm gonna type in, we'll go with 500 by 500. You can set the start position, which is really nice. So there's some other things that we can do in here. We may talk about this more in the future, but there's an option here to import a height map, which would allow you to import a grayscale height map image and use that image to generate a terrain. So we'll probably do a follow up on that after the fact, but just know that that's in here. And notice how there's there's multiple different tabs in here for different things that you can do. We're not gonna worry too much about these for right now, but you've got things like your mesh resolution and your texture resolution and other things like that. I think you can change a bunch of those um, inside of the actual settings over here. You can also create a preset. If there's something that you like, you can set that up in here. So for right now though, we just wanna click on the button for create. That's gonna create a 500 by 500 terrain inside of Unity. So note there are some other options in here. We're not gonna to worry too much about them right now. We're just gonna jump directly over into editing this inside of our uh, workspace window. So now what you're gonna notice is you've got this terrain right here, and then you've got options over here on the right hand side for different things that you can do to that terrain. There's options over here for create neighbor terrains, which we'll talk about in a minute, paint terrain, which we're gonna do a lot of work with, um, paint trees, which allows you to actually like place things on your terrain. There's paint details, and then there's terrain settings. For now, we're gonna focus mostly on this paint terrain setting right here. So if you click on this, you're gonna notice what this does is this gives you a drop down right here for multiple different kinds of things that you can do with this paintbrush. So there's a ton of stuff you can do in here. You can add noise, you can sculpt this, you can raise and lower terrain, um, you can set the height. There's a ton of different tools in here actually for working with terrain. And so to start off, what we wanna do probably is just do the simplest thing which is raise or lower terrain. So you can just click on the option right here in order to do that. And so what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow us to affect the way the terrain works inside of our window. So notice how you have options down below for brushes. And what brushes are gonna do is brushes are gonna affect or they're going to maybe filter where the effect happens. Filter is probably a good word. So for example, I've got this circle right here. And remember, we've got this set to raise or lower terrain. Notice how this says left click to raise, hold control and left click to lower. If we left click and drag, it's gonna raise our terrain. But one thing that you might've noticed is when we created our terrain in our terrain toolbox, we actually set this so that it had a maximum height of one without knowing it. So when we did a window terrain toolbox, there's an option in here for terrain height. 
which is going to set the maximum height of this object. So because of that, this is only going to raise your terrain by like one meter in here, which is not exactly what we need. So to fix that, you can just jump over into your settings over here and under your terrain settings, you can set your terrain height to something higher than one. So for example, you have a max value of 10,000. Well, I'm just going to set a max value of, we'll call it 75 right now. Well, notice how when I set the max value to 75, then those areas which I painted are raising up in here. And so, like for example, we've got this mountain in the middle, but I can click and drag in order to add more of this, like this. So you can see how I can quickly add a terrain look inside of our scene. And notice how this is maxing out at that max height that we had set. So it's gonna be kind of flat at that maximum height right now. And so if you do decide that you want that to be higher, you can just come in here and you can adjust that terrain height to whatever you want it to be. There's a few different settings in here that we can use. And so let's say we wanted this to go back down or you could hold control and then left click in order to move this back down. And so I can use the control left click in order to flatten things back out right here. And so one thing to consider when you're doing this is you may want to take a look at your brushes and figure out how they fall off. So if you look at this one, for example, it doesn't have a defined edge around the outside like the last one we we're using did. So what that means is that means the transition between the different brush strokes is much smoother and it gives you a much more natural looking result. So you may want to consider using um, the brushes that have kind of this like gray fall off, gradient fall off around the outside um, in order to get those results. So when you're adding things, notice how your brush is going to adjust the kind of terrain that you create. So some of these have a little bit more noise in them. And so with the noise in them, notice how you're going to get a different effect and a different result. So you can um, left click and drag in order to use those tools. And so notice how with these tools, you can adjust them to have a different strength, right? So if I was to drag this all the way up to one, for example, and set this to this option right here, notice how this is gonna jump a lot faster than if I was to set my brush strength to something like 0 0.04. Like if I set it to 0 0.04, I can click and drag and drag and drag and drag, and this is gonna raise this up really slowly. If you set your strength really high, then it's gonna get to that maximum height really fast. So depending on what you're trying to do, you can kind of adjust that using that setting. So there's also options in here to adjust your brush size. So let's say I wanted to add some more detail type work. I could adjust the size over here using this slider. So notice how when I drag it to the left or to the right, it gets bigger or smaller. And you can actually hold the S key and drag your mouse in order to set that size um, using a keyboard shortcut instead of the slider. So you've got your brush size options. Notice that jitter is going to add just a little bit of randomness to this. So it's gonna randomly add variation to that brush size. And so in addition, if you're using some of these other brushes, there's an option here for rotation. And so rotation is gonna rotate that brush. And so you can hold the D key inside of Unity and drag your mouse in order to rotate the brush that you're using in here. And then I didn't talk about it before, but if you hold the A key and drag it left and right, you're gonna be able to adjust your strength from zero to 100% like this. So you can use that in order to quickly um, adjust your brush settings. And then down below, there's an option in here for brush spacing. And so let's flatten this whole thing out real quick. All right, so this option down below is going to set the distance between each stamp, um, whatever you click and drag in here. So let's make this a little bit smaller, maybe like, let's go with 100 right here. Well, notice how if I set my brush spacing to zero, what this is gonna do is this is gonna give me a nice smooth mountain in here, right? We could probably turn our brush strength down a little bit. But if you were to adjust this so that your spa spacing was higher, it's gonna set a distance between every time that this stamps in here. So notice how now, if I click and drag, and we'll turn our strength back up. But if I click and drag, 
notice how it's giving me a little bit more spacing between each one of these stamps that's in here. So instead of this just like stamping continuously, it's giving me a little bit of space in between each one of those, which is gonna give me a different result. And then brush scatter is gonna set how far off of your surface this scatters inside of your scene. So if I was to set my brush scatter in here, right, and we'll go ahead and we'll set our spacing back to low again. Notice how with the scatter, what it's doing is it's scattering the brush strokes across a width like this. So this is kind of like more spread out. So if you want to quickly add hills or other things like that, you can do that with the brush spacing and scatter down here. And so notice how there's tools in here to do other things as well. So for example, there's sculpting tools, there's different effects. You can add erosion to areas. So hydraulic, thermal, or wind erosion, as well as some other things as well. But let's say for example, that we wanted to sharpen the peaks in here. So you've got a tool in here for sharpening peaks. And what that's gonna allow us to do, and I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller, is that's gonna sharpen up the top areas in here. So notice how as I click and drag in here, that's really kind of sharpening these points so that it comes to a little bit more of a point. Right, So instead of having that like gently sloping smooth thing that we had in here before, now it comes to this kind of like sharp point in here. So you could do that, you could add different erosion types. So let's say for example, that you wanted the wind to come in here and I'm gonna rotate this this way, but you can click and drag in here as if the wind has been blowing on it for a long time and it's actually gonna erode that terrain like the wind had been blowing on it for a long time. So notice how you can adjust that rotation using the D key, and then you can click and drag in here and that's actually going to erode this in a realistic way. So in the same way, let's say that you wanted something that was more like water, there's an option here for erosion hydraulic. So if we were to click on that and then click through here, notice how in the valleys, for example, it's going to erode this like water had been draining down it. So you can use this in order to almost simulate as if drainage had been coming down here and kind of like eroding away at the hills. So there's a ton of cool tools in here to do things like that. There's also tools in here to do things like, I love the bridge function, for example. So what the bridge function is gonna do is that's going to create a bridge between two areas of terrain. So the way that's gonna work is I'm gonna do a control click right here to set a first point we're gonna click again in order to connect the bridge. Well, what that did is that took this point right here, it raised the terrain so that we had a bridge across this face like this. And so there's a ton of different tools in here for sculpting. I also wanna pay a little bit of attention to how you can add textures. So what the textures function is going to do is that's going to allow us to actually paint a texture onto our terrain. And so the way this is gonna do that is by creating different layers that are gonna go on our terrain. So let's say for example, that we were to scroll down and let's go ahead and let's click the little drop down for layers right here. Notice how it's telling us this doesn't contain any layers. So we need to add them. And so we can do that just by adding a layer and let's just call it green terrain. I'm gonna click on create and it's gonna ask us to select a texture inside of, our, uh, inside of our scene. And so I've got a texture map in here for the albedo of a ground like this. So I'm just gonna double click on that and that's going to bring this in. All right, so this applied our moss material to our surface. And so notice how our moss material first off is tiling really bad because it's too small. If you wanna adjust the materials on a layer, you can click on the layer properties. That's gonna give you a drop down down here for the layer that you have selected and you can add things like different maps. So for example, let's say I wanted to bring my normal map in, I could drag that over into this slot right here. So in addition, you can also set your tiling. So let's set these to like 15. And notice how inside of your viewport, the size of the material that's being placed in here is adjusting based on that change that you made. And so you can use this in order to really finely adjust the way that the textures and materials sit on your surface, like this. So in addition to adding one layer, you can also add multiple layers and then paint between them. So let's say for example, that I wanted to create a new material with some more rocky ground. So we could call this rocky ground and click on create. 
and I've got a material I brought in from Texture Haven, um, a rocky ground material right here that we can use for a new layer. Well, notice how with this layer right now, it's not showing up on our surface, but we can use the paint texture function in order to add that. So with this selected, if I just click and drag in here, notice how that's gonna paint this material on this surface. And I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my size up a little bit. But notice how this material is being painted on the areas where I click and drag, like this. Then we could also take this material and adjust its tiling. So 15, 15. Notice how I get that better rocky material in here. And then we could also add our normal map to it right here, just like this. Note if you get the error that these are not normal maps, you can just right click and go to properties and then just make sure you set the texture type to normal map. And you can use those same brushes in order to add materials. So let's say we wanted to add some random rock in here. Notice how you can use this brush in order to do that. So you can use this to really quickly add some randomization to your surfaces so you don't get that like tiling texture that's in here. So say we wanted a little bit of moss growing on this surface, we could adjust our brush size down a little bit. But notice how I can click in there and I can kind of break that up a little bit just by clicking on the surface. So you can use this in order to paint those different materials in. So in the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about the scattering functions that are in here. So you can quickly add trees and other vegetation to your terrains in Unity. But leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.